Hi, I'm Les Vegas. Today, we're talking about the Rupert Neve Designs Portico 2 Master Bus Processor. We'll go over all the features and hear what it can do on a full mix. The MBP was originally intended for mastering, but it has become a secret weapon on the mix bus as well. It features high voltage, discrete Class A amplifiers, custom wound Rupert Neve Designs input and output transformers, a stereo VCA compressor limiter, and a stereo field editor. The R&D Portico 2 Master Bus Processor sells new for $4,699. And though that's a good chunk of change, after this demo, you'll see why it's worth every nickel. If you could only have one piece of analog hardware for mix bus and mastering applications, this would be it. It's often compared with the SSL Fusion. But if I had to choose between the two, I'd go for the MVP. I do miss a dedicated EQ section, but I find from mix bus and mastering applications, I can dial in all the top or low end I want just using the silk red and blue texture control, which is great because all it's doing is emphasizing high or low frequencies with transformer harmonics instead of boosting or cutting frequencies like you would with an EQ. Essentially, keeping the intended frequency spectrum of the mix intact. Genius. On the front panel, we have two gain knobs, which when used with the compressor, act as standard makeup gain, allowing you to increase the volume of the compressed signal to match the bypass signal. When used with the limiter, this control sets the desired ceiling of a mix. Once setting the limit knob to the desired maximum level, you can increase the gain until your average mix level hits your desired loudness. The gain control will drive the level of the mix to the set limiter threshold without exceeding it. The threshold knob adjusts the level at which the compressor begins to attenuate the signal. Compression starts when the compressor input signal level exceeds the set threshold level. The attack knobs set how quickly the compressor attenuates input signal once it exceeds the set threshold. The release controls adjust how fast the compressor will return to unity gain after the signal crosses below the threshold. The ratio knobs adjust the compressor slope between 1 to 1 and 40 to 1. The blend knobs adjust the mix ratio of the dry uncompressed signal with the wet compressed signal. Set the blend anywhere between 0% and 100% for parallel compression. The silk switch toggles through the three silk transformer harmonic saturation modes, off, red, and blue. Red silk emphasizes the high frequency harmonics and blue silk emphasizes the low frequency harmonics. The texture knob adjusts the amount of silk transformer saturation added to the signal path when silk red or blue modes are engaged. The limit knob controls the threshold of the soft clip limiter section. The limiter is disengaged until turned past the third detent. As the threshold is increased, the limiter's release time increases. This creates a smoother dynamic response as the amount of limiting increases. The FFFB switch toggles between two different compression modes, feed forward and feed back. The sidechain detector of a feed forward compressor is fed from the compressor input before the gain control element. And the sidechain detector of the feedback compressor is fed from the compressor output after the gain control element. The RMS peak switch modifies the compressor sidechain detection. The default detection response is RMS averaged, which most closely matches the way our ears perceive loudness. Peak mode detection responds more directly to the incoming compressor audio signal, which can be used to prevent clipping and maximize overall loudness. The SC 125 Hertz switch engages a 125 Hertz 12 dB per octave Salon key high pass filter into the compressor limiter sidechain. The SC insert switch engages the sidechain send and return jacks on the rear panel for external processing. The comp in switch engages the compressor limiter section on its corresponding channel. Engaging or disengaging the comp in button never affects silk status and will not affect the SFE status unless SFE to comp is engaged. The link switch sums the sidechain information from both compressor limiter channels. When link is engaged, both channels are controlled by channel A's controls. Bypass all is a true bypass switch allowing you to completely bypass all processing from the left and right channels. The stereo field editor section features four depth and width controls. When the depth and width EQ switches are engaged, the depth and width EQ knobs allow you to select from four frequency bands to process. This provides pretty extreme 8 to 12 dB boosts to the mid and or side information of each selected band. 
The depth knob adjusts the overall level of the center information and the width knob adjusts the overall level of the side information. The width and depth end switches engages or disengages the width and depth controls for easy A-B comparison. The SFE to comp switch routes the depth and width information to channel A and B compressor paths, allowing you to manipulate the dynamic content of the mid and side information. When engaged, the width and depth controls allow you to blend the amount of compressed mid and side information that is mixed back into the audio path. And to the far right, we have the power switch along with four LED gain reduction and output meters. On the rear panel, we have a stereo pair of female Neutrik XLRs for connection to the custom Rupert Neve Designs transformer coupled inputs, two male XLRs for connection to the transformer coupled outputs, sidechain send and returns, a ground lift switch to isolate XLR output pin 1 from chassis ground, and an IEC standard 3-pin grounded fused AC inlet. Now, let's give Zounds a big thank you for providing us with the Master Bus processor for today's video. If you decide to purchase the MBP, please help support this channel by using the link in the description below. It takes you straight to the product page, and Zounds shares a percentage of the sale with me. Plus, Zounds is a great place to shop. They make it possible for us all to own analog hardware like this with their split payment option. There's no credit checks, no interest, and free two-day shipping. Just place your order and it's at your door in 48 hours. It couldn't be easier. And Newsweek Magazine ranked Zounds number one in customer service for the past two years in a row, besting all the biggest names in music retail. All right, let's hear how it sounds. For this demo, we'll loop the chorus of All In My Mind by my friend and mastering client Clovo and Paloma B. Available everywhere December 1st. Use the link in the description to pre-save the track and be notified on the day of release. If you'd like me to master one of your songs, just use the link to my Sound Better profile in the description below. Mention you're a subscriber of this channel and get 10% off. As always, each pass was recorded with my Dangerous Convert 80 Plus Mastering Converter at 96K, exported, then precisely level matched the original, unprocessed mix using integrated LUF measurements from beginning to end so we can accurately hear the difference the processing makes without louder volume levels influencing our perceptions or decisions. Of course, with this unit, we're actually looking for the gain increase we get from the harmonics, saturation, stereo field effects, and limiting. So towards the end of this audio demo, we'll listen without level matching as well, so we can hear what it can do as a final bus processor on our mixes and masters. All right, let's do it. So
What do you think? Can you hear how the MVP completely elevates mixes and masters to an entirely new level, surpassing radio ready quality? Is it a must have for mixing and mastering? I think so, but let me know in the comments below. Also, I made these test files available in high quality, 96K, 32 bit WAV files to compare in your DAW. You can download them at the link in the description below. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Just one line. I am. I'm everything.